Hello and welcome back to another episode of Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that Oasis Primer has tools to help you work with models that use LS Dyna parameters? Today I'm going to show you some of the built-in tools that Primer has to help you work with models that use parameters. Parameters are essentially just variables or placeholders for values. These could be either numerical values or character values. For example, you might have a text string which represents a file path or you might have a numerical value that represents perhaps the um, scale factor in a loading curve or the density of a material. Typically, you use parameters for things that will change or things that are referenced multiple times and you want to be able to modify them from a single position. In this case, I've defined this material using three parameters for the density, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. As you can see, a parameter is defined using an ampersand followed by the name. Hovering over the parameters shows me the variable value as well as the option to edit the variable. Clicking on the edit opens up another pop-up window where I can change things such as the value, even the name, and also the type. Note that changing the name here will also propagate to anywhere else that the name is defined. These other options here are more advanced parameter options such as using expressions uh, which can themselves reference parameters and they use mathematical operations to evaluate the value. Um, then this local one here is used when you have parameters stored in different include files and you want it to be local to the include. And then also you can have the option where your parameter might be mutable. So for example, you can redefine the parameter multiple times within your file and the order in which it's defined changes the value. And then lastly, this type option is used particularly if you want to um, use the parameter for a specific purpose, for example, the node ID or node set ID. And this is particularly useful if you're using something like LS opt, which uses parameters and tweaks them. So here we've got some parameters defined. And then I've also got another material um, open, which is um, also a steel material, but it doesn't have any parameters defined. And as you can see, there's a difference between the buttons that we have at the top here. So the one on the left has this P button here, and that's because some parameters are defined and it allows us to toggle between explicit and an implicit parameter view. When I toggle, we can see that now the numbers or the values are visible rather than the parameter names. But there's also a dotted line below them, which shows that they're actually parameters under the hood. However, if I was to tweak this, we'll notice that the dotted line disappears. And essentially what I've done is I've actually modified um, the entry here and I've unlinked it from the original parameter. If I wanted to bring back the link to the parameter, I would need to um, enter ampersand followed by the name that I was after. When I type an ampersand, Primer uses a dynamic filtering um, to allow me to filter down parameters um, and select the correct one. So as I start typing, it will give, narrow down the options and allow me to pick the one that I'm after. So I'll just select PR Steel and it brings it back. And notice because I've toggled the P button here, it then repopulates it as a number with the dotted lines underneath. So moving over to the right hand side now here, I notice that I've got the density of steel here um, and I might want to actually just link that up to the um, density parameter that I've already defined. So again, pressing ampersand, I can see that I've got uh, my row steel there. But if I wasn't sure what it was called, I would enter row. And then notice that I've also in this model got um, a density of rubber defined as well. So um, at this point, I'm now going to show you how you can use some of the um, filtering tools, um, which helps you narrow down the options. So we have the functionality of either using a star or a question mark. Question mark represents any single character. Um, so if I press enough of these, it will match to the correct uh, length, replacing them. Or a star represents any number of characters. So I could do row star and then I know steel ends in an L. So pressing L then narrows down the options to an L and then I can select that and replace it there. Now, I also can create new parameters in a very similar way. Um, and this is an opportune um, situation to do so because I noticed that my R, S and T stiffnesses are all the same um, value. 
and I might want to be able to change them all um, from a single variable. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press ampersand and then give it a name, tk. And we'll notice that the value that was already there has now populated in here, and I'm happy for it to be a floating point number. So I simply just need to um, update, and then it's created that parameter for me. And now I can come here, and I can just go ampersand t, and I can see that that variable is already there and replace all of those ones. And then now I also have the option to toggle between parameter view and not, and so we can see that there. Now I'm just going to show you um, how we can also edit a parameter and have its change propagate everywhere. So notice that this one is actually defined with the row steel here, but supposing I um, wanted to have a shorthand because I knew that uh, almost all the time when I'm using density it's going to be the steel one. I could just change the name here to row and then update here. And now we see the row steel is no longer there. And actually over here, it's now updated to a row. And if I toggle back here, we can see that now it's row rather than row underscore steel. And so that's uh, one of the really useful things that Primer has, um, which uh, basically allows you to change all the cross references for parameters in a single place. Lastly, I'm just going to show you the parameter window, which is where all of our parameters are defined. Um, and if I select modify here, I can see all the parameters I've got, um, as well as their types. So if it was an expression or uh, if we have any of these other options toggled, we can see their name in the first um, in the first column, as well as the type and then the numerical value. And then we also have the option to see um, where the um, the file is where the parameter is stored, so either in the master include file in this case, or I could store it in a different include. And then we can also see where these are used. So in this case, if I click on usage, I can see that um, it's used by just this material here. But if I actually update this material that I've defined, um, you'll see that that usage will change. Um, and just to point out, when something isn't used, it's grayed out, so it's essentially a redundant parameter. So you'll notice that basically when I um, update this, and then I'll have to reopen this window um, or reset all, you'll see that now the usage of TK, um, which is that stiffness parameter uh, for the translational stiffness is also updated. And I can click on usage here and we can see that the TK parameter is referenced by that material that we just updated. I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of parameters in Primer, and I look forward to seeing you next time for more Oasis Top Tips.